Making your way to one of the bald eagle nests along the banks of Lake Pleasant is not easy. First, there's the long boat ride to an isolated cove. Then there's the hike up the cliff, way up the cliff. Eagles are smart. They build their nests in very inconvenient places, like this one, to keep predators away from their young. This group hiking up the mountain today is not going to harm the birds. In fact, as part of Arizona's bald eagle protection program, biologists from Arizona Game and Fish are going here today to place identification bands on the two new eaglets. Biologist Kyle McCarty makes the last leg of the journey alone as he repels down the cliff and into the nest. We attached a small video camera to one side of his helmet for a bird's eye view, if you will. That big thing on the other side of his helmet is the counterweight. In this case, a large rock held in place with duct tape. I, wanna, I got to the nest, secured the nestlings uh, so they could come up here for banding. And while I was down there, I was uh, looking in the nest for eggshell fragments that we can measure later the thickness of those and uh, also looking at prey remains and uh, looking for foreign objects like fishing line uh, hooks and, and to remove those. Even though he is very young this eaglet did his best to defend his roost. Kyle took the extra precaution of gently placing a stick from the nest behind the baby so it didn't accidentally fall out. Once secured, the eaglets are placed in a special bag and hoisted back to the top where they'll be weighed and measured and their ID bands will be attached. He's got a hood on. Why do you think he's got a hood on? Bald eagles are all visual. So you take away their vision and this guy you can see, he's just kind of resting. Yeah. They'll actually, if I put him down and I leave him for two or three minutes, he'll fall asleep because they are all visual. So most of their senses. Now he can hear us, which is why he's shaking. He can hear us, but they're mostly visual. See, this guy's almost asleep now. That's cute. So, so this is to reduce stress, so we're not stressing out the birds. Also, Normally, only the biologists are allowed into the eagle area while babies are in the nest. But for the first time in conjunction with the Arizona Game and Fish Department's education program, a group of homeschooled students and their families have been invited along to observe the process. Environmental education, in particular, our Focus Wild at Arizona program, um, is doing a lot of lot of outreach type programs. We have some lesson plans that are available online. We do a lot of teacher workshops. But in addition, our homeschool program is is really hopefully starting to take off. With this being kind of the start of it. Outings like this are very important. Um, I stay home to do school, obviously. So when I get to get out of the house to do something like this, it's a lot of fun, especially for something like this because I've always been interested in bald eagles and my family's always like to like study them and talk about them so it was really cool to be able to come and see this. Jamie Driscoll, head of the department's bald eagle program, lets the students get a good look at the work he's doing on the youngster. This male eaglet is about four and a half weeks old and weighs a little over five pounds. Once they get three weeks old then they're okay, okay, they can start regulating their own body temperature. This, the black contour feathers start coming in when they hit four and a half to five. So, and then he'll keep on growing these out and he'll eventually get bigger than the adults by the time he's 12 weeks old and leaves the nest. Today was a, is a special, special day for us. It's the first time that we'd have a, had a chance to invite a group of homeschooled students to come out and participate in a banding and learn, learn a little bit about uh, the state that they're living in and, and the work that we do out here. Right now, there are 56 known bald eagle breeding areas in the state. In the late 70s, that number dropped to a low of only 11. But with the conservation efforts implemented since then, the number has continued to grow. I am absolutely encouraged with what I see with the eagles in this state. Uh, the, in the last two years, we found six new breeding areas. Uh, the six years that I've been here, we've sent, found 12 new breeding areas. Um, it's we, we've tied records for uh, for number of nestlings fledged, fledged each year, and hopefully this year we'll beat that record. Uh, we're we're hoping to get more than 42 nestlings this year. It's it's a little funny. A lot of people are 
surprised that bald eagles are here in Arizona, but we've, we've got quite a number of them. Uh, pretty much what bald eagles need is water and fish. And Arizona does surprisingly have a lot of water, and those waters are, are full of fish. So it's, it's got everything that these eagles need in order to nest and produce nestings. After the eaglets have been banded, they're lowered back into the nest under the watchful eye of their parents, who, though displaying their discontent with the disturbance, never venture very far from the nest. Being down in the nest, I had a few minutes while, while you folks were up here banding them, uh, just to relax and kind of enjoy it, think about where I was sitting in an eagle's nest, watching these adults flying around, knowing I'm not supposed to be there, but knowing we're doing a good thing. Banding the eaglets is only one part of the Arizona Game and Fish Department's bald eagle management program. You can help with this effort by observing the seasonal closures of about 20 recreational areas during the eagle's breeding season and removing fishing line, which eagles can become entangled in, from the shores of our lakes and rivers. Okay, you ready? Raising awareness of the bald eagle and how to best continue to protect them is the main reason to include the students and their families on this trip. I hope they, they gain a, a greater appreciation of the wildlife and the state in general, the diversity that it has to offer. And maybe in the future, they, they will become some of our conservation pioneers and, 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 and you know, they'll play that out when it goes to ballot um, to save some of these species and, and the management that Game and Fish does. I learned a lot because I came from Minnesota, so I thought I knew a lot about bald eagles, but I learned a lot more. So I found out how much I really didn't know but they're really adorable and the adult ones are really beautiful and I'm glad I was able to come and do this. Well, I saw like a, like a whole bunch of just the bald eagles flying around and then they brought up the baby eagle and it was just like bigger than I thought and it was so cute. It's like cuter than I thought it would be. And I feel like it's more special because they didn't open it up to the public and they only opened it up to us. So I thought of us as being a really special group. I think it was. It was well received. The people seemed to enjoy it. You know, they're already excited about some future events perhaps and, and that they, they really enjoyed getting that close to the eagle. Oh, for me it was, I mean, those babies just, you know, just two or three feet away from me. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's way cool.